G'day folks, with today's project I wanted to start making a generator out of this uh, washing machine motor. This is out of a LG front loader, uh, direct drive front loader. Fairly modern unit. Uh, I didn't really have any use for it and the shock absorbers had ripped themselves off the uh, outer drum and I think actually no, the, the main drive eventually died. There's nothing wrong with the motor but the drive just up and died one day so goodbye rag washing machine, the one that used to live out by the back tap, this is all that's left of it. Um, it's a permanent magnet, three phase uh, DC drive, uses a special kind of DC speed controller to uh, run it, you can't just plug it into a VFD and expect it to work, but you can spin them externally and get tremendous amounts of voltage and frequency off the uh, output terminal on these things, so yeah I'm going to turn this into basically a remade equivalent of my smart drive generators that I experimented with years ago. I don't have any more smart drive motors left, I basically threw them out, but I do have this one now which has a much sturdier steel flywheel as opposed to the pla reinforced plastic ones. The plastic ones do have a steel band around the outside to hold the magnets in place from well, centrifugal force, but they're still not as strong as these. So that one's ready to go. I'm just working on extracting the uh, drive shaft from the old spider and uh, I'm going to weld a pulley to the end here and connect it up to a three phase motor. So it'll probably be maybe not, maybe not one to one, I might put a smaller pulley on the motor and just a bigger one on this end here just to give the motor a bit of a chance. It's going to take a bit of horsepower to spin it but as you can see it's well and truly cast in. This is all just cast in the die and uh, yeah I'm gonna have to split it three ways instead of two so yeah I've got to cut down here again with the hacksaw I could get the grinder out but it's 40 degrees outside and it's a total fire band so I don't think people would like me running an angle grinder I could run a TIG welder because that's not uh, doesn't spray spatter or anything anywhere but I want to minimize the uh, use of power tools this time of year <laughs> well grinding anyway grinding and cutting and creating a potential fire hazard because it is Tinder dry outside now, so that's why I'm in here with the air conditioning on. <laughs> that's a good day for it. And the reason for this generator is not to generate useful electricity in the sense that I'm going to power things. I'm going to put it across some scrap plasma TV panels and see what happens because it's high frequency AC. You get a really high squealing sound from these uh, motors when you load them up and spin them up past their normal speeds. I could even feed it into a big three-phase rectifier and see what that does. <laughs> we get some three-phase, um, or it'd be single a single DC output instead of three alternating current outputs, which I think are wired in delta. Because there's a uh, midpoint on those windings that's all tied together, and then there's the three connections going into it. So it looks like it's wired in 220 delta, but technically that's a DC motor. It will not run on a three-phase AC drive. It just stalls the drive out and goes into overcurrent. It just the drive can't do it. So yeah, it's a it's a different kind of speed controller. It'd be a MOSFET based uh, speed controller. Anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, well I'm getting there. I'm just working out shaft dimensions and offsets. I can basically bore all the way down to the th the thickness of this bush and still be clear enough without hitting the uh, back of the housing with the pulley. Originally I was going to weld a uh, insert into this air conditioner, um, car air conditioning freewheeling pulley. Uh, after knocking the bearing out I was going to weld an insert in there but then I realised there's no way to actually put a grub screw in without drilling through the actual V grooves and even then it's still a bit of a pain in the ass. Whereas now I'd rather sink a uh, cap screw into the surface of the shaft and then use the uh, clamping force of a taper lock bush to take up most of it. Uh, it's only going to be one, running one direction, so it's uh, not going to... If, if it does slip, it'll slip, but it's uh, better than... Well, basically, I, I can't mill a keyway here at the moment, so it's just going to have to go the way it is. Uh, when I get a mini mill from somewhere, maybe the one from work, I don't know, we're still deciding what to do with that, but I'll be able to mill a key slot in basically any external diameter that I want. If it comes to internal diameters, I have to uh, broach it or EDM it. I can EDM it at work, but I'd have to send it off to get broached if it was... Uh, well, I couldn't burn it with an EDM. 
but yeah, I'm going to replace the bush. This is the bush that came out of this pulley originally. Just one of the ones I bought from the scrapyard years ago. Uh, I found out the hard way that it was broken in half. As soon as I took it out, it just fell to pieces because it's been broken for quite a while. It's also a one inch bush. So I've got this uh, 28 millimeter metric bush. They're all, they're both Fenner taper lock bushes. So I'll drop this one in. Uh, that minor diameter there is 26 mil, but I can still get enough grip range over it and sink a cap screw in here and just grind flats on it so that it acts like a key. Uh, I know it's cheating, it's pretty crude, but it'll work for the purpose of the exercise. God knows how long this thing's going to last. I could burn it out in the first session and it'll, it'll be all over, so I'm not going to go crazy with over-engineering it. I'm just going to build it so that it works, and it works constantly until the motor stator fails. So, yeah, it should be good. Taking it down to 28 mil, so just roughing it out at the moment, and then we'll uh, finish it. Maybe on the other lathe. Point one three, point one three off. Getting closer.
28.04. I'm happy with that. Very nice. Okay, not too bad. The bar itself is a little bit warm, so that diameter is going to uh, shrink ever so slightly. So with a bit of luck, it'll end up on 28 on the banger, maybe ever so slightly small. But that doesn't really matter because taper lock bushes can take up a little bit more slop than you'd think. Yeah, so it's firm to go in there. The bush diameter was 28.15 expanded, but there's a bit of rust on the inside there, so that's why it's gotten stuck. I'll let it cool down and uh, give it a polish and clean up, and we should be right. Ah, oh, there we go. With the bush and everything at room temperature and clean, it sets together just nicely. Tiny little bit of slop in it, but this bush is expanded to 38. Oh, sorry, 28.14, I think it is. So you want a bit of extra play in it so it's got room to actually close up and clamp the shaft evenly. The shaft itself is 28 on the banger, so. This bush will uh, close up nicely. I could probably give the shaft a little bit of a polish. It's a bit of a ridge there where I started and uh, just got my bearings back because that little step there is a little bit smaller than it should be. But after that I sort of found a midway point and got it to where I was. You could see that in the previous footage. Just going by the feel of it essentially. That machine has no DROs and all the dials like these ones are completely useless because there's well, these ones here are fixed, but they're Imperial. Uh, the ones on the turret lathe are Imperial, and they're... No, no, they might be metric, but they're almost completely illegible. They don't work, they just sit there and free spin. They aren't grub screwed to the shafts. So, yeah, until I get around to putting the Heidenhain DRO on the turret lathe, this is basically what I'm doing with it, which is actually pretty good considering. Considering how worn out that machine is, that machine is shocking. It's done a lot of work since 1938. gummy stuff. The bush needs a clean but you know how it is. That'll do. Time to fit it up. Put the pulley on. Uh, actually no, I've got to drill and tap a uh, hole in there and sink a, a cap screw in and just file the head so that it slides into that key there. Key slot. Uh, it's not much of a not much of a key but it's better than nothing. I mean it's only a generator. I'm not driving a worm, driving a shredder which could be just locked up solid and just shear the key and spin the bush on the shaft. Uh, I could virtually get away without anything really. I might try it without any uh, key at all. Uh, even then, I suppose if it does accidentally start spinning, it'll flog out the shaft and the bush, and then I'm in trouble because I've got to buy the bush next size down, and they're like 30 or 40 bucks each. So, yeah, that's the only bush that fits that size the six, 1615 series bush. Fenner Taper Lock 1615 and they come in a variety of bore sizes for that type but we don't want to have to go there. Now I do have a few other different Taper Lock style systems, they're sprockets. So, no it's empty, that was a 1615 bush. And there's a self-aligning bearing, I don't have the 1615 left. Why are those boxes still in there? I've obviously used the bushes. I think I used those bushes in the um, original shredder, the Shredder Mark 1. There's a 1310 with a 14 millimeter bore. That's in there. Yeah. There's a 1310, that's a shallow bore. And I've got a few different bushes in here. Various other tooling and bits and pieces. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. That's how it's going to go. I've got to uh, find another grub screw for it. I'm missing one of the two grub screws. That one there was in the jacking out position. Uh, the other one was just missing. But I can uh, certainly resolve that. The bush isn't seated all the way in. It's just sort of sitting there. But once it pulls in, there's a bevel on the inside of the bush there. So the shaft will just sit flush. That's quite nice. At full contact, I've just got to key it and that's about it, but you'll see that in part two. So thanks for watching and let's go on with part two shortly.